Welcome back. If you've been curious about fertility treatment in the process or wondering if it's even an option right now, we've got some help. Here with answers is reproductive endocrinologist from Stanford, Dr. David Adamson. Welcome to the show, doctor. Um, first Good of all, morning. Yes, first of all, how are couples who were undergoing fertility treatments affected by COVID-19? Were they, did they have to come to a stop? Were they halted? And what's the impact both now and down the road? Well, people who were undergoing treatment uh, were able to continue the treatment when, when uh, the COVID shutdown really started and emergency cases for women with cancer are still ongoing. But the vast majority of infertile couples had to stop their treatment. And this was very, very emotionally difficult, of course, uh, in addition to all the problems we're having just with COVID. Yeah, I can imagine it was probably pretty devastating for a lot of you know couples or women who are trying to conceive because it's a process, it's not an overnight thing. We have had a lot of viewers ask about being infected with COVID-19 while pregnant. Is there a bigger risk of being infected for mothers to be and would a pregnant woman who gets infected um, automatically pass it on to her baby? Well, as far as we know right now, pregnant women are not at a higher risk of uh, getting the infection. So that's obviously good. And we don't think that they get sicker with the infection either. So that's also very good news. And there's also reasonably good news in, in that there is no evidence that this virus has passed from the mom to the baby. So all those are good things. However, it's really important to emphasize there's still so much we don't know about COVID-19. This coronavirus is very different. It's a, a very potent uh, virus. and it's really important not to get infected with it if you're pregnant because women who get very sick during pregnancy with the virus do have an increased risk of having complications of pregnancy with an early delivery. And it might be that they even have a risk of miscarriage, although we're not sure about that yet. Okay, well, that's really good information to know. Um, getting back to fertility when people are trying to conceive, when is it going to be okay for people to start a new treatment or if they had to stop, restart the treatments? That's a really difficult question. There's so much we don't know right now, and it might well be, you know, months, if not another year or two, before we have really better information about the effect of coronavirus on pregnancy. So it's, it's important to note that if a uh, couple are really younger and have lots of time, I think it's probably reasonable to put off getting pregnant for a while now for at least several months to maybe a year until we know more about this and maybe have some better treatments. But on the other hand, you know, if a woman is a lot older, you know, in her late 30s or 40s and really wants to have a baby, then the, the risk of, of losing fertility over that time is probably greater than the risk to the pregnancy. For, Women who are pregnant, we can be reasonably reassuring that things are going to be okay. So that's really important to know. But there's so much we don't know yet that you want to work from an abundance of caution. Anything that um, people who want to get pregnant that want to undergo some type of fertility treatment, things they should be thinking about right now before they restart treatment? The most important thing is to stay healthy with the usual things that we want women to do before pregnancy diet. Uh, sleep, exercise, all those good things that should be done. Uh, also, of course, it's really important to avoid infection now. So, you know, the social distancing and the PPE is really important for women who are considering pregnancy and, of course, for their partners and the close family unit that they have. And then they should get in touch with their doctor now so they can make plans so that if they're ready to start pregnancy, they know the types of precautions they can take working with their uh, obstetrician and their physicians to uh, to have the best possible outcome for a pregnancy. And you know, how is this affecting things like prenatal visits or uh, you know um, people who who want to start those treatments, especially if they've lost their work or you know they have different tough circumstances that they're facing right now. Yes, you know, healthcare has changed so much just in the last couple of months. The first thing, of course, is many many more uh, people are having visits by telehealth. So. Anybody having health care now, including obstetrical care, can consider that as much as possible will be done at a distance by telehealth. And secondly, there will certainly be uh, procedures put in place, uh, waivers uh, when you go to the office, um, certainly pre-screening uh, with questions to make sure you're not sick or people in your family aren't sick, probably screening with temperature when you get there, 
a lot of social distancing in the office and limitation of the number of people in the office and PPE for everyone, for the patients and for the doctors, and also different protocols in the hospitals when women are going to deliver. So it's really important to communicate with your doctor so you can understand uh, the best way we can, uh, we can manage uh, the presence of this coronavirus. Dr. Adamson, thank you for joining us this morning and providing us with this information. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. This interview involves commercial content. The products and services featured appear as paid advertising.